Ever wonder how one of the world's busiest airports is tackling the energy transition head on? Welcome back to PowerPlay, the video podcast that travels the world to explore the hard truths of the energy transition. I'm your host, Paul Browning, and after an incredible three months in Europe, visiting France, Spain, Norway, Scotland, Iceland, Greenland, the Netherlands, Austria, Germany, and Italy, I'm flying back home with a layover in the Big Apple. We explored everything from geothermal power to winemaking to electric vehicle charging across Europe, letting serendipity guide us along the way. So imagine my surprise when I discovered during my layover that JFK itself is buzzing with groundbreaking energy transition projects. So let's go. Do you ever fly home from abroad through JFK or LAX and feel like our airports in the U.S. could use a modern makeover? Today, we're talking about not one, but two major new terminals that are under construction here at JFK. Terminal 1 is going to replace the current Terminal 1, the recently closed Terminal 2, and the former Terminal 3, forming a new state-of-the-art international terminal on the airport's south side. It'll have 23 gates and aims to become one of the top international terminals in the world, with the first gates expected to open in 2026. And Terminal 6 is a new $4.2 billion terminal spanning 1.2 million square feet, providing 10 new gates. It's being developed in two phases, with the first phase set to open in 2026. These projects are part of a broader $19 billion redevelopment plan to transform JFK into a world-class airport. They'll modernize the infrastructure, expand capacity, and offer better connectivity and amenities for travelers. But here at PowerPlay, our main focus is on two groundbreaking renewable energy projects that are integral parts of this transformation. First up is the microgrid powering the new Terminal 1. This microgrid includes over 13,000 solar panels on the roof, making it the biggest rooftop solar array in all of New York City. And it's also the biggest of any airport terminal in the United States. That's impressive on its own, but the real game changer is the microgrid itself. A microgrid is basically a mini power grid that can operate on its own if necessary, perfect for an airport where an outage can cause absolute chaos. JFK's microgrid combines solar panels, battery storage, and hydrogen fuel cells. Now, fuel cells aren't exactly mainstream technology yet, so I called in a favor from an old friend who worked with me at GE and another friend who worked with me at Mitsubishi for some help. They both now work at Hyaxium, the Doosan company that supplied the fuel cells for Terminal 1. With their help, we scored interviews with Hyaxium's chief technology officer and chief commercial officer. All right, Dave, so just to start, before we get into the details here, I just have to ask you, um, what's the bigger challenge? Is it developing and deploying this cutting edge technology or explaining it to uh, sort of a normal person? <laughs> I think there's challenges in both. Uh, certainly, you know, developing energy projects uh, have their challenges in, in siting and permitting and the time that it takes to make a successful project. But I think also uh, in general, stationary fuel cells are not as widely known or adapted um, to the applications that uh, uh, that we see fit in the marketplace today. So I'd say uh, both are a challenge, but we're really excited about the potential that the technology brings uh, here in the U.S. and around the rest of the world. So how does this microgrid actually work? Well, it pairs rooftop solar and battery storage with these fuel cells, which produce clean power through an electrochemical process. No combustion means minimal emissions, crucial for some place like JFK. But it's not just about clean, it's about having power come rain or shine, day or night. And to understand that, I asked Sridhar Kanuri, Global Chief Technology Officer at Hyaxium, to explain the microgrid's architecture. Let's take a few scenarios and talk about how this microgrid system works. Uh, if there is a uh, hurricane or a winter storm in the New York area, and multiple grid feeds that are tied to the system are down, then the microgrid controller uses a drop and pick up scenario. In this case, it kicks off the uh, grid feeds, it drops the fuel cells down to idle loads, and the instantaneous loads are picked up by the battery and generators. And in less than a minute, the fuel cell ramps up to provide power to the uh, terminal. In another scenario, uh, let's say, like you said, a sunny day, 
where you have a lot of solar power being produced. In this case, uh, the controller utilizes most of the solar power and sends a signal to the fuel cell and to the other sources uh, to reduce the amount of power that is drawn from them. The fuel cell quickly follows what the controller is saying and drops down the load and vice versa. If, if there is a cloudy day and there is not much solar available, then the microgrid controller tells the fuel cell to ramp up and it can quickly ramp up in less than a minute to provide whatever power is needed. Airports need power every second of every day. No one wants a blackout when thousands of people are trying to catch flights. So I asked Dave how he sees JFK's approach shaping the future of airports and sustainable energy. Yeah, I think it's it's a really important project as we start to look not just at the fuel cell, but uh, the microgrid application uh, that our technology is being utilized in. So uh, as we saw JFK, the airport, new terminal one, we we'll utilize rooftop solar. We'll also utilize battery energy storage. And then, of course, our fuel cell technology will really provide uh, the core effectively baseload power because it is a reliable 24-7 uh, type operation. So does all this high-tech power setup change the passenger experience? Will travelers see huge new machines whirring away? Sridhar says it's all behind the scenes. I don't think you will even notice that uh, there are fuel cells or any other power generation sources that are at the site. Uh, the microgrid controller seamlessly transitions between all of these generation sources or even the grid. Well, and Dave, let's talk dollars and cents. Um, okay. So what's the business case for uh, fuel cells and, and for a project like this? We've seen a number of different customers, certainly uh, airports, hospitals, universities that, that really value things beyond just um, dollars and cents, as you said, in an LCOE comparison. I think as we talked about earlier with JFK, the ability to utilize the byproduct heat allows you to offset other things like fired boilers for uh, for heating or fired boilers for industrial processes. You can take the byproduct heat and integrate that uh, into your overall um, energy consumption there at the site and really start to see efficiencies that uh, approach 80 to 90 percent. And here's another important feature of how the folks at JFK structured this deal with an innovative business model called energy as a service. Alpha Structure, the project developer, is financing and building the system, and JFK will pay for the energy as a service. That means the airport doesn't shoulder the huge upfront costs, and the developer has a stake in keeping everything running smoothly. It's a win-win for both parties. And the innovation doesn't stop at the new Terminal 1. Just a short distance away, another monumental project is reshaping how JFK harnesses energy. Total Energies is constructing a 12-megawatt solar canopy over one of JFK's long-term parking lots. This isn't just any parking lot, it's about to become a massive source of renewable energy. Paired with 25 megawatt hours of battery energy storage, this solar canopy will help reduce reliance on the electric grid during peak periods. The project includes 32,000 sun power solar modules and will include a custom wave design canopy. Plus, there will be five Tesla Megapack battery energy storage system, enhancing the airport's energy resilience. And get this, Total Energies isn't just generating power for the airport. They've signed a long-term power purchase agreement with the Port Authority for half of the energy generated from the behind-the-meter portion of the project. And the other half of the electricity will be allocated as community solar to be completed in a phase two of the project. This means delivering energy to local utility Con Edison through the New York State Community Distributed Generation Program. The goal is to provide guaranteed electric bill savings for 25 years to historically disadvantaged and environmentally impacted households in nearby Queens communities. Imagine families in Queens seeing a tangible reduction in their electric bills, all thanks to solar panels right here at JFK. This is a prime example of how renewable energy projects can have a dual impact, improving infrastructure while directly benefiting local communities. It's not just about clean energy, it's about energy equity. When complete, the JFK solar carport will produce enough clean energy to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by more than 6,000 tons a year. That's equivalent to taking about 1,500 gas-powered cars off the road annually. And this project also contributes to the Port Authority's goal of reaching net zero greenhouse gas emissions across all of its facilities by 2050. Between cutting edge microgrid technology, record setting solar installations, and a thoughtful community solar program, 
JFK is redefining what an airport can be. It's not just an energy-guzzling hub of planes, lights, and baggage carousels. It's a model for how critical infrastructure can embrace clean, reliable, and even equitable energy solutions. But let's face the hard truths of these two projects at JFK. Part of the reason that JFK's projects are monumental achievements is that they had to overcome challenges unique to airports, which have struggled to implement renewable power in the past. Wind turbines are just off the table due to safety concerns, because they can interfere with flight paths and radar systems. And solar panels have historically been problematic because of glare issues that can affect pilots and air traffic control. However, the success at JFK shows that with innovation, collaboration, and determination, these obstacles can be overcome. While these incredible projects are transforming JFK Airport into a hub of sustainability, another hard truth is that the largest source of carbon emissions at airports comes from the airplanes themselves, the ones taking off and landing every few minutes. Airplanes are the heavyweights of carbon emissions at airports, and decarbonizing aviation is perhaps the most monumental task of all in the energy transition. The challenge? Finding ways to repower these aircraft without compromising efficiency or safety. But there are promising efforts underway. Companies are using green or low-carbon hydrogen combined with captured carbon dioxide to create low-carbon fuels compatible with existing aircraft engines. And other companies are developing electric planes powered by lithium-ion batteries for regional travel. And remember in the first few episodes of Season 1 when we traveled around China on bullet trains that traveled at over 300 kilometers an hour, connecting every major city? When China connects two cities by new high-speed rail, flights between those cities are eliminated or greatly reduced. I can tell you from personal experience that it's much more convenient to travel by high-speed rail than it is by air. Replacing short-haul flights with electrified high-speed trains is a thriving solution in densely populated continents like Asia and Europe, but it has yet to gain momentum in North America. So next time you pass through JFK, remember, you're not just in any airport. You're in a hub that's leading the charge in the energy transition, a place where the future of sustainable travel and community empowerment is taking off. Ultimately, JFK's approach is more than just a collection of cool technologies. It's a pioneering blueprint for other airports and other industries looking to revamp how they use energy. Whether it's the microgrid, the solar canopy, the fuel cells, or the partnership that makes it all possible, there's a lot to learn here from resilience, innovation, and the promise of sustainable travel. So stay tuned for more power play as we continue to travel the world to explore the hard truths of the energy transition. From massive solar arrays and community solar projects to the ambitious goal of decarbonizing aviation, we're covering it all. If this episode sparked your interest, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends or colleagues. We just passed 50,000 subscribers and you can add to that number by subscribing for free to my power play YouTube channel at the end of this video and leave a comment on my YouTube channel or my LinkedIn account about anything you'd like to hear about in future episodes. Now that I've returned to the U.S., I've already started working on Episode 3 of Season 3. My wife and I made a 3,200-mile drive across the United States from San Diego to Orlando, and next week in Episode 3, we'll be exploring the past of Route 66, an iconic symbol of American freedom, and the future of electrified road transportation on I-40 and other U.S. highways. Until next week, keep thinking about how we can power a better world.